they think it's all over? Since our last series, the sporting world has been rocked by scandals involving sex, drug-taking, bribery, leading to wholesale sackings. And sadly, after intensive investigations, we haven't been able to pin anything on David, Rory or Gary. So, we're stuck with them for another series. Welcome back. <laughs> David's right-hand woman this week is a comedian and former psychiatric nurse who recently got married to another psychiatric nurse. It was the only wedding in history where the best man's buttonhole was on the back of his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> on David's left is a man who learned his snooker in his mum's living room and still enjoys a game with his family. Only these days, of course, he's usually knocked out in the first round by his aunt Doris. <laughs> Steve Davis. With Gary and Rory this week, a famously rude TV interviewer who recently said, Sometimes I go too far. I honestly regret some of the things I say to my guests. Well, don't worry, it happens to us all. It's that charmless bull tosser, Clive Anderson. <laughs> We open the new series by asking the teams to explain what lies behind a pair of goal celebrations. David, Joe and Steve, here's Robbie Fowler scoring a penalty for Liverpool against Everton last week. And Robbie Fowler has the chance to restore parity for Liverpool. And it's very well taken. And I'm not sure that's the most sensible of celebrations from Robbie Fowler, but he's enjoying the moment. Now, what we'd like to know is what was the official explanation given after the match for that goal celebration? Am I right in saying he was wearing one of those breathing strips? You know, those little strips on your nose. He that certainly was. Allows yeah. you to get more up there. <laughs> you know, like footballers do that snotting thing where they go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Joe. What? Back oh, of the hand. Always is that a back the of the right hand. right action. Yeah. So oh. it goes nicely down your wrist. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Is, that, is, is there it... a verb for it? Mm. Yeah, what is it, Gary? Snotting. To snot. <laughs> to snot. To snot. To snot. Yeah. You know the, uh, the city of Nottingham? It was originally called Snottingham. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the place where a man spits just there, like you did? <laughs> <laughs> Can we we'll see that? Yeah. That's quite nice. Well yes. done. Thank you very much. That's <laughs> all right. This is a welcoming show, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> That's called sputum, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I'm glad he comes, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> He's been fined 64 grand, hasn't he? Something for, like for that. For doing that. Which, um, if you work it out, that's a thousand wraps of Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a good price, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> How do I know that? Um, Kirk Stevens told me. <laughs> <laughs> or that bloke off Blue Peter, if you don't know who Kurt Stevens is. Is Charlie some sort of slang term for it, then? <laughs> oh, ha, 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 Rory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> was it something to do with Graham Lasseau? Possibly. Well, well, see, you can either snort coke or blow it up your arse, can't you? <laughs> 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 Very funny shaped rolled up pound note. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pound note? Where you getting those from? Pound note! We're cooking on gas yeah. here. He does it in you Scotland. Know, yeah. You get a ten yeah. shilling yeah. note. <laughs> well, wasn't the official explanation that um, it, was, it was Gerard Houllier? Yes, yeah. Gerard. Gerard yeah. uh, Didn't he say that um, some French footballer was celebrating? by eating grass, and that uh, Fowler was copying them. Yeah, sort of. I'll probably give you three points for that. Here's team manager Gerard Houllier with an elaborate excuse involving Liverpool's former Mets player, Rigobert Song. Even at training sometimes, we imitate Rigobert Song. You know, in Mets, they used to do that all the time, and, and uh, just eat the grass and walk, and I think he was just doing that. Robbie Fowler's been banned for six games, partly for the coke sniffing and partly for a separate incident in which he bent over and showed his arse to Graham Lasseau. Although Gerard Houllier still thinks he was doing an impression of Bobby Charlton and Duncan Goodhue. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Fowler's nickname at Anfield is God because fewer and fewer people believe in him every year. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Clive. For you, we have the Argentina striker Gabriel Batistuta scoring for Italian club Fiorentina. And Batistuta goes on. 
and scores superbly. Terrible mistake by Costa Curta, but he doesn't mind. And it's better stood. Oh, what a strike by the Argentine. So, Gary's team, what do we think was the reason behind that? Well, it was a bit tough, isn't it? Because um, Robbie Fowler got I think, fined and banned for about four games for that, encouraging people to, to smoke uh, or to snort coke. Whereas Batistuta is, is mowing down the crowd with a machine gun, so he ought to have been banned for seven weeks he for wasn't. that. He was, actually, <laughs> he was actually scything the grass. Scything the grass. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I don't know. It, it looks a bit like a machine, but it looks like he might have sort of glove puppets on his hands. So it's a sort of sooty and sweep <laughs> thing. If you look at it, <laughs> trust me. But I've actually operated <laughs> sooty. Have you? Yeah. It's true. Sooty, sooty goes to heaven. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> St. Peter says, Sooty, you're in heaven, you can have anything you want. He says, I want Matthew Corbett shrunk to this side so I can shove my hand up his <laughs> arm. <laughs> what are you saying? It's a natural way to celebrate. Great. He shot a goal, I'm going to shoot, I'm a hero. It's something like, it's like a James Bond impression, something like that. Ooh, that's very, very good, yeah. yeah. Mm. Is it something Can like that? Can you go any further than James Bond? Just James Bond? Sean I'm Connery. I'm tempted to give it to you anyway. Sean Connery. Uh, no, I'm going to yeah. give you three oh. points for that. Here's Gabriel Batistuta himself to explain. No, 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 Massaggiatore. Ah. Eh, lui è convinto che un agente 007, allora io. <laughs> per ucciderlo ho fatto questo gesto. Japanese games company Nintendo recently bought a large stake in Fiorentina. They just spent 20 million quid on a small mustachioed plumber in overalls. <laughs> Football in Florence actually began in the 15th century. Well, well, well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you should worry, at least you get the chance to make the fing stuff up. <laughs> You could if you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Football in Florence actually began in the 15th century. An early record still exists of the original stars Umberto Di Costello, Fabio Di Brindisi, and Tony Cotti. <laughs> and so at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. We move on to our excuses round, where we ask the teams what pitiful reasons were given for sporting calamity. David's team, your subject is the most unconvincing excuse for a tie since Joe Ashton visited a massage parlour. <laughs> it's Lennox Lewis's recent draw against Evander Holyfield. Now, at this point, we'd normally show you a clip from the fight, which Don King kindly said we could have for a nominal fee. But, unfortunately, it turned out what he'd actually said was, you can have it for a phenomenal fee. <laughs> so, to save £20,000 of your money, we've staged our own reconstruction of that controversial fifth round. asked me to put on a Lennox Lewis mask. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of the judges, Eugenia Williams, scored the fight as a clear win for Holyfield and then later admitted she'd been talking rubbish. What was her excuse, David's team? Did she say, um, I am a woman and I don't understand anything about <laughs> boxing? <laughs> And then did she go, oh dear, I've burnt the scones and burnt some <laughs> tears? <laughs> Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> well, she did an Essex girl impression, saying, leave him, Evander, he's not worth it. <laughs> no. <laughs> did she lose her score sheet? She lose oh, her score she... sheet? And then say, I've lost my score <clears throat> sheet, and then Evander Holyfield said, it's all right, I've got one here. <laughs> 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 Since Van Gogh died. Well done. <laughs> Have you borrowed Don King's hair? Have I borrowed Don King's hair? <laughs> Only for the evil. Have you borrowed Bernard Manning's ass for your face? <laughs> <laughs> Could be the House of Commons in here, honestly. <laughs> Did she say that she couldn't see properly because um, um, one of them had their back turned to her, blocking the other one so she couldn't see? And there were people in the way. You're doing it all for this team, aren't you? Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. Here's Lennox Lewis's manager. Well done. Here's Lennox Lewis's manager, Frank Maloney, to tell us. The lady judge claims she couldn't score the round to Lennox Lewis because despite having the best seat in the house, 
She couldn't see Lennox Lewis's work rate because his back was in the way. She claims it was too big. What do you think, Don? Well, that's not the only Don King puppet, of course. Some of them judge the fight. <laughs> Eugenia Williams is actually an experienced boxing judge who started her career with the Police Athletic League. In one of her early decisions, she ruled that Rodney King had clearly outpointed the LAPD. <laughs> Although he grew up in Canada, Lennox Lewis was born in East London, and he's as cockney as the next man, as long as he's standing next to Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's team now, and even more prestigious occasion for you, it's Paul and the Moscone Cup, and action from the vital tie featuring Steve Davis and Fabio Petroni. And here come Fabio Petroni and Steve Davis. Fabio Petroni looks to be in some kind of distress. He's, he's sobbing there. Seems to have pulled himself together somewhat now, though. Over, prepares to break. <laughs> oh, where's the white going? Oh, he scratched. Don't wonder how he's going to react to that now. <laughs> Great. Well, Steve, you really ran the gamut of emotions there, didn't you? <laughs> From A to B. <laughs> So, Gary's team, why was Steve's partner, Fabio Petroni, blubbing like a little girl? You look so pleased with yourself and chuckling away, and Fabio's in tears. Had you told him a joke in the wings? <laughs> <laughs> why are you playing pool? You're a snooker player, not me. Yeah, but he's crap. <laughs> oh, sorry. He's a world champion. That, sounded, that was unfair. Oh. Sorry, Steve, sorry. <laughs> Had somebody <laughs> knocked his 50p off the side of the table? <laughs> <laughs> Wipe the names off the blackboard. And put them in the box. <laughs> oh, he's because he was the one that got the bent cue with no tip. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone from strength to strength for you, hasn't it, Steve? It has certainly. Yes, I, I, I was number six in the rankings in the pool. Uh, we had six-man team, and I was number six. <laughs> <laughs> Is he Italian? He's Italian. Yes. Was he crying because <clears throat> he'd entered a moustache-growing competition and, and came second to his mother? <laughs> Gary, Gary. Was he just a bit excited about playing with the boy wonder? Yeah, I'll give you three points for that. And here's Fabio Petroni what? himself to tell the story. What? I cry because I represent uh, Europe in the, in the Moscone Cup, the biggest tournament uh, in the world. Uh, and because I play uh, with uh, Steve Davis, the legend of the pool. And that's enough to make uh, anyone cry. <laughs> The normal rules of pool are winner stays on, so Steve here has never actually played two consecutive <laughs> games. <laughs> Funny enough, Steve and David Gow were playing a frame of pool just before the show, but David had to retire after he kept wafting aimlessly a foot away from the ball. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. <laughs> And now it's the return of our photo fit round. We've mixed up three famous sporting faces into one hideous hole. David's team, we'd like you to unravel this. It's <laughs> <laughs> Sammy Davis Jr, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it um, a picture of Tony Blair from the front of the Belgrade Times? <laughs> 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 Um, is, is it, it a computer graphic of Edward and Sophie's first child? John Mary Barrymore at Wendell and he's gone by the throat. That's, uh, I'll tell you what it is, one of those royal novelty condoms. Look, that, just slipping it on there. Look. One of those royal novelty condoms? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, we call them king size. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah, yeah me. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it the brother that Jimmy Hill keeps in the attic? <laughs> or is it? Or is it? No, it's the brother that keeps Jimmy Hill in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the bloke who tests Princess Margaret's bathwater? <laughs> <laughs> I bet that crown would really hurt, wouldn't it? What, on the end of a bloke's knob? On... <laughs> <laughs> or just generally? Isn't it supposed to be three different people? <laughs> it is supposed to be three different people. Well done, Steve. Steve. You've spotted it's three different people. <laughs> Don't call me really? Steve for nothing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. How much? 
How much is it? <laughs> it's the best joke I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it's it's brilliant. And it's stupid. <laughs> Says nothing right, so at all. How much do we <laughs> Oh dear. You're sick. Paracetamol, please. <laughs> right, well, the top so how much is obviously to pay? Prince Nassim. Prince it? Nassim, yes, yeah, I'll give you that. Is, is it Glenn Prince? Hoddle in a future life? <laughs> <laughs> the mouth at the bottom, is that Monica oh. Lewinsky? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Michael Owen at the bottom. Michael Owen? With all those films? Oh, yeah, yeah, any yeah, ideas over here? Yeah, it's oh, yeah. Um, Bernie Eccleston. In the middle, definitely. And Frankie de Tori. Ooh, let's have a look if you're right. Yep, so yes. that's one point to David's team, two points to Gary's team. Wow. Prince Nassim, Bernie Ooh, Eccleston Charles. and Frankie Dittori, but you get a chance, <laughs> a chance for a bonus point on David's team. What do those three people have in common? Oh. I think I know this one, actually. Well, then, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the quick fire round? <laughs> they all have wives who are taller than they are. Is the correct answer for a, a bonus oh. point. Yes, let's see them. Last year, Prince Nassim announced before his fight with Wayne McCulloch, I'm going to beat him like I'm his daddy. The plan went well until after the fight when he was taken away by the social services. <laughs> Apparently, Bernie Eccleston's close friends include <laughs> Kenneth Clark and Chris de Berg. No wonder he finds Formula One so interesting. <laughs> In 1993, the police arrested Frankie de Tori with two grams of cocaine. They became suspicious at the weigh-in because he doubled in weight. <laughs> so, Gary, your team must unstitch these three. I've had her. I'll, I'll do it for you. <laughs> it's back! <laughs> it's back! That line, come, that line comes with the photo fit round. I have, Every it's time. A tradition. I haven't, in fact, had her at all. I had a younger sister. <laughs> or was that Graham Ricks? <laughs> Is it Jamaica's Norman Wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> He's very good. <laughs> he can make a telephone directory funny. <laughs> <laughs> he rolled it up and shoved it up his ass. And... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So that's what you were doing when I. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, they're ringing a minicab phone. <laughs> This is taking a strange turn. <laughs> <laughs> is this the Hucknall brother that they don't talk about? <laughs> no, that's Mick Hucknall. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's got... It, it's rude, well, isn't it? It's, it's got to be Rude Hullet. Rude yeah. Hullet, I think, is probably you, right, yes. This, that's quite an easy one, but the rest of it's harder. Oh, call mm. call cover. First name? Anna. Mm. Do we have and first name? The Chin. Well. The Chin. Gormless. Must be a rugby player. <laughs> Must be Welsh. What do you reckon? Is this topical, Definitely is it? Neil Jenkins. Let's yeah. see if you're right. Let's spin it up. Wow. Very good. Rude Hullet, <laughs> Anna Kornikova <laughs> and Neil Jenkins. <laughs> you say Roy Jenkins? <laughs> no, Neil Jenkins. <laughs> now, once again, there's a fact that connects the three of them. They all speak perfect English except for Neil Jenkins. <laughs> no, the link is... That they've all been banned from having sex. Rude Hullet was forced to remain celibate for three weeks before every big match when he was at AC Milan. During the US Tennis Open of 1997, the 16-year-old Anna Kornikova was banned by New York State law from having relations with her boyfriend because of their age gap of 11 years. And Neil Jenkins has to sleep in a separate room from his wife the night before an international match, along with the rest of the Welsh <laughs> rugby side. <laughs> I'm not sure that came out quite right. <laughs> Neil Jenkins' team, Pontypridd, were involved in a massive barroom brawl on Touring Breve, after which the French side described the Welshmen as uncouth pigs. Apparently, they'd ordered white aftershave with their meat. <laughs> Anna Kornikova was once accused by Pam Shriver of wearing out the mirror in the players' locker room. It was particularly irritating because Pam was desperate for a shave. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have eight points and Gary's team have 11.
It's time now to deny our regulars of the gift of sight as we play Feel the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're up first. What is the idea of this round? Do I have to pick out which of these used to be in Mungo Jerry? Yes, that's it. And I think it's quite easy. Put your blindfold on, Rory. What? You're cheating. Not cheating, there's nobody here yet. Put it on. The Invisible Man. Come on, Invisible Man. You're on the side of you on anyway. Gary's. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we have our first mystery guest, please? <laughs> Your ninety seconds start now. Ah. Ooh, what, what's that? Hello. What's this? <laughs> Where is it? Oh dear, Linford Christie. <laughs> <laughs> What is it? Oh. Number 24, Bolton Wanderers. <laughs> Real Twerk, number 18, Newcastle United or Manchester City. <laughs> what do you think? Sno uh, snooker, is it a snooker? Is it that bloke? Yeah, I bet it's that bloke Petroni, the, the one who was crying, the Italian. <laughs> I thought I'm feeling this for... <laughs> You don't need ball. a clue, I don't think, Rory, quite the same. Yeah, there. Come on. Oh, oh it must it's be. not Graham Kelly. It isn't. It is yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, then. David and Joe, if you'd like to take your positions out there for Phil the Sportsman. <laughs> Put your blindfold on. Are you head of blindfolds, Clive? <laughs> Can I take mine off now? <laughs> I would if I You're not the top of a lamb chop, actually. OK, can we have our second mystery guest, please? OK, and your 90 seconds start now. Oh! Is <laughs> <laughs> it? OK, let him get near for a minute. <laughs> is it? Um... Is it, is it, a, is it a, is a weather forecast? What's going on? With it? It's Bill Sorry. Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Watery eyes. Not bad. Not bad. And if it is, can I punch you in the face? <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's Steve, mate. Yeah. Come on. Uh, What's your name? Oh, oh, oh yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Signor Petroni. The, um... First name? Oh, <laughs> Fabio. Uh, well, yeah. Fabio is uh, absolutely <laughs> correct. Well done. Oh. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have 11 points and Gary's team have 14. <laughs> We end, as always, with the name game. Yes, the winning team goes first, which at the moment is Gary's team. Clive, could you pass those along to Rory, please? Would it be simpler if I just read them? It would be simpler, but it's too hard. I'll spoil the game. Okay. As many names as you can in the next 90 seconds, hopefully. <laughs> Starting now. Uh, Aston Villa striker. Um, well, strikes uh, Swedish, Swedish, Swedish people mainly. Um, Stan Kyle. Yeah, yeah, very good. Um, <laughs> Uh, a newspaper magnate who didn't buy Manchester United. Rupert Murdoch. Oh. Um, an Arsenal player with a with a strange Christian name which contains four letters that make you blind. Spanish for John. Juan. Juan. Spanish for Anthony. Antonio. Antonio. Spanish for Samaranch. To <laughs> <laughs> say that that was predictable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liverpool uh, Cameroonian player who, who's something you'd sing. Oh, song. song. Yeah. Um, I, I'd, I'd accept First it. First name. 
Oh, strange, uh, strange yeah. name. Oh, yeah, really. Long pop, about, pop song is known in, in the yeah. dressing room. Is known as they pop. call him. Yeah, they call it's him. It's true. Kids call him song. Rigabert. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rigab 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 um, this this bloke is a is a wrestler. He's the commonest name, a commonest male name. John. In John. Commonest surname. But what's John, the other? John. Smith. John Smith. John Smith. John Smith. <laughs> uh, French. French for John. Jean. John. French for. French for Jack. 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 I mean. <laughs> yes. Um, surname is the same word repeated twice. It's something. He's a striker, and it's not a very good name for a striker. So that no, means Gary's so team have moved on up. to 20. David's team, you have 11. 10. We'll win you the game, Joe. Good luck. You must have done it. Your 90 seconds start now. England football manager. A bit mad. Christian. Uh, Alf oh, Ramsey. That, so. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Glenn, we'll do that. Yeah. Uh, West Indies cricketer gets lots of runs. Lara, Lara. Oh, yes. You can win you know that. You only need to get Somebody, someone who takes ten percent off That's you, maybe percent. more even. Uh, manager, agent. What's his manager? name? You big oh, uh, Thomas Hearns. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Hearns. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas Hearns. <laughs> He's not a sportsman. No, you're, you're manager. What's that? Do with sport? I don't care. What's his name? Barry Hearn. Yes. He doesn't do that, so his manager takes care uh, of that. So number one player, same name, <laughs> same talent, yes. Um, Venus's sister, tennis play. William. Oh, that's your 90 seconds. Uh, yeah, what's the first? Oh, Sir Venus. <laughs> Sir Venus. <laughs> Come on. A Liverpool player. Um, Michael Owen. Michael Owen. <laughs> oh, God, give her a chance. Fowler. When, when I go to McDonald's, I buy a ham. Oh, OK. <laughs> what's, what's, his first, what's his first What's his first name? If you want chop. Patrick. 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 <laughs> I don't even think a girl. Oh, brilliant. What a great <laughs> name. He's a boxer. And Sounds like. His surname is something brown that you eat, and it's not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a Mars bar. What's chocolate, that chocolate, chocolate. Yes. Yeah. And his first name's Billy the. Kid. Yeah. Chocolate. Yeah. Uh, this is a West Funny Indian name. batsman. And... Oh, oh. Okay. So the big news there is that Steve Davis thinks he's managed by Thomas Hitman. <laughs> 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 well. No wonder the old career's been going a bit like that. <laughs> so at the end of that round, David's team have 18 points, but this week's winner with 20 are Ooh. Gary's team. Oh. So our thanks to Gary, Rory and Clive, David, Joe and Steve. We're back a day early next week on Wednesday night. <laughs> So if you're watching the repeat, that's tomorrow. Until then, we're all off to watch Robbie Fowler score. My name's Nick Hancock. <laughs> they think it's all over. It is now. And Nick and the lads are back in a fortnight's time. That's because of Chelsea's European semi-final next Thursday at 7.45. Next tonight here on BBC One, Nick Moran and Fiona Allen are on the couch kicking off a new series of The Frank Skinner Show.